Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about my top 10-ish, you know, features that I think are really cool that are coming out in Python 3.9. Um, and we're going to show a small demo of each of these new features, so hopefully you can understand them as well. And I'm going to be using a pre-release version of Python 3.9 because it hasn't quite been released yet, uh, but we are at uh, the release candidate version, and there are supposed to be no new features after the release candidate. So we're going to be doing this against 3.9 release candidate 1, and the way that I have this installed is via Dead Snakes, which is a Ubuntu PPA that backports and forward ports Pythons. I actually maintain back, dead, back snakes. <laughs> I actually maintain Dead Snakes, so um, I'm using my own packages here. Uh, and we're going to be comparing against, you know, Python 3.8 which is 382 on this machine for whatever reason. Um, yeah, and, and in case you're wondering, dash dash version dash dash version is not a mistake. You can see that with only one version, you're going to get the short version, and with you know two of them, you'll get the long version. But that'll probably be you know, an explanation for, for another time. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. The first thing, and the thing that I am the most excited about in Python 3.9 is generic type annotations. Um, in, well, that's Python 3.8. In Python 3.8 and before, the way you would, um, the way you would work with generics is you would import a capitalized version of them from the typing module and, uh, or you would have to quote the parameters if they were particular other built-in types like Q, which doesn't have a typing equivalent. So you would do, you know, from typing, import, uh, let's do, you know, dict and list. D dict and list. <laughs> uh, and you would maybe have a function that takes in some dictionary, and maybe that dictionary maps from strings to list of integers, and it returns none. And you would, you know, write your function like this. And this kind of was unfortunate, for, for, especially for one reason, because you had to import these types from typing. Uh, but also the typing module was kind of slow to initialize because it has to do a bunch of fun, generic, meta-class magicry. And, um, you know, importing this was also problematic because previous versions of Python didn't have the typing module, and so you didn't have these dict and list types. Uh, but in Python 3.9, you can just use the built-in types, and the built-in types themselves now, you know, have their own genericized version, so you can use this directly. So instead of doing the capitalized versions, you would just do f d dict stir list int, and that works just as well as the timing versions. And yeah, this is the thing I'm most excited about, so, um, but I think that's pretty cool. All right, let's talk about the next thing. The next thing is the merge operators using the bitwise or operation for dictionaries. And um, I guess we can show you some dictionaries here. So let's say we had D1 is equal to 1, 2, and 3, 4. And maybe D2 is equal to 5, 6, and 7, 8. And D3 is equal to, let's map 1. So this, this is going to have the same key as the first one, just to show how this works. Uh, we're also going to map 991.99 to 1. Um, so we have a couple dictionaries here. Before, if you wanted to merge dictionaries, there were kind of a bunch of ways that you would do it. One way that you would do it is like, uh, you know, the, the star star splatting operator, D1 and D2. So this was one way to splat two dictionaries together. Uh, you could also use, you know, the dot update method to add a dictionary's elements into another one. Um, but now there's built-in operators which somewhat uh, match the set operators, although for whatever reason the and operator was not implemented, but we won't dwell on that. The or operator is implemented though. So you can do, instead of that syntax, you can do d1 pipe d2, and you can see that those, those merge those two dictionaries together. Uh, if you merge a dictionary that has the same key, I believe the last key wins. Yeah, so you can see here that the, the one key got overwritten with one mapped to 999. Uh, and if you want to update them in place, so you can see D3 is this before. If we do, we, we used to have to do D3.update D1, um, but now you can do pipe equals to modify D3 in place. And you can see again, like the keys from D1 overwrote those in D3. But anyway, those are the merge operators, and those are, those are brand new in Python 
the next thing that I want to talk about is the remove prefix and remove suffix methods on strings. So if you had, uh, there was a common mistake in writing strings where you would have, you know, uh, let's say foo.exe or yeah, sure, foo.exe as some string. And you wanted to remove the, you know, dot exe part of this. Now, granted, you should use the, the path functions to do this, but let's assume that you don't have path functions for some reason, or maybe this isn't a path where you're working with nothing else. Um, before, a common mistake that people would do is they would use s dot strip and pass in dot exe. And in a lot of cases, this would look like it worked. And so, you know, they would write their one test, they would ship it to production, and then it would explode spectacularly. Because uh, what strip actually does is it checks for each of the characters in here and then removes them from the left-hand side. So if we had like, you know, uh, foo exe 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 dot exe um, dot strip dot exe, you'll notice that it stripped all of these characters instead of, you know, just removing the suffix as was intended. And so this new remove prefix and remove suffix method are intended to you know, solve that problem. So if we did remove suffix, suffix is at the end, prefix is at the beginning, you'll see that it, it works here. And what happens if it's not there? Okay, yeah, so if it's, if it's something that doesn't match, it just leaves the original string alone, which makes sense to me. Uh, but yeah, I think, these, I think these will solve a lot of you know, common, common mistakes with the strip, especially the R strip and, and L strip methods here. Okay, cool. So for the next one, we're going to be talking about, and this is a very, very subtle change, but I'm actually very excited about this because it's it's a common mistake that I've made many times when making, uh, you know, tools that are run in the background or logs or, or whatever. And this is that sys.standard error is now line buffered. Uh, it used to be line buffered when you're in an interactive mode, but when it was in the background or piped or whatever, it was block buffered. And this often meant that you would wait a very, very long time for the block to fill up, and then you would see the output. I'll actually show you an example here. I've written a small little script for this, the line buffered script. And this script is you know, not, not super complicated. We're just uh, looping 10 times. We're printing out a log line with a number, and we're writing that to standard error. And we're sleeping in between these. And if we run this with Python 3.8 uh, or Python 3.9, 3.9 line buffer. You'll see that it just prints out those and it pauses in between them. Now the main difference that happened here is when these are piped. And so if I were to pipe this to cat and I'm using pipe and then an ampersand, this will pipe both standard out and standard error. Um, and if we do this, you'll see that it's waiting. And it's trying to fill up a block buffer here. And then when it eventually completes, it just spits them all out at once. Uh, but in Python 3.9, you'll see that it, it line buffers them. So you can see that standard error output immediately. And this helps a ton with debugging or if you're you know running on a remote machine and you want to hold the, the logging output. Um, I think this is a hugely positive change. Um, I'll actually link a video about standard out and standard error in the description in case that's confusing because I did another video on that. Uh, all right, so the next change that I think is really cool is the ast.unparse method. And this can kind of, it's not, oh, that's Python 3.8. That won't work. Uh, this kind of allows you to load and write out uh, Python source. Now, of course, AST unparsed can't preserve things like comments or string types or other stuff like that. Uh, but it's kind of the, the opposite of the AST.parse method. And so if we do module equals AST.parse, you know, X equals one, or, I don't know, foo, uh, sure. X equals foo. Uh, simple assignment. You can see that we have our module here, ast.dump module. Uh, and, you know, indent equals two if you want to see it better. Actually, is indent two? Was that new in this version of Python? I forget whether this is 3.9 or 3.8, but anyway, this is kind of the AST representation of that source. And we can uh, ast.unparse that value to get us kind of back to uh, a source that looks you know, similar to what we started with. Now, of course, you can see like it doesn't preserve the string quotes because it doesn't actually have that information in the AST. So you can see the double quotes here were actually converted to single quotes down here. But AST on parse is still pretty cool. It's definitely pretty helpful for like, you know, load an AST, manipulate the AST in memory, and then write out some code. Uh, now, of course, that code isn't going to be, you know, linter friendly or whatever, but you could still run that code and uh, save it to a file if you need to pre-process for some reason. But anyway, I think that's pretty cool. 
Uh, the next thing that I think is pretty interesting is they have completely rewritten the parser in Python 3.9. There is a new PEG, or PEG-based parser, and this allows Python to have more complicated syntax. Uh, there weren't, well, little, little asterisks here, there weren't any new syntaxes introduced in Python 3.9 that take advantage of this. Uh, but future versions will take advantage of this. And um, I, I say a little asterisk because there is actually a new syntax that's been added in 3.9, but it's more of an Easter egg. And I'll show you that really quickly. Import context lib. And this this I'm actually super excited about because um, <laughs> context managers have been kind of gross to write out if you need multiple of them that are, that are long or whatever. Uh, and this new syntax allows them to be uh, written in a better way. So I'm just going to make a simple context manager, context lib context manager, the CTX. Just a, a very simple context manager. Um, normally, the way you would call this is with CTX as value, um, print value. Um, and so this is, this is a very simple context manager. And if you needed to do multiple of these, you could do that. You could do you know, CTX as v1 and CTX as v2. And, you know, that that works, v1, v2. Um, that's all fine and dandy, and this still works. Both of these syntaxes work in Python 3.8 and below. Um, but the tricky part came when you wanted to have them on multiple lines. And um, let me show you how you used to have to do this, and, or like, you know, a, a pretty enough syntax way to, to, to do this before. Uh, imagine that this name is really long and doesn't fit within your 80 character or 120 character or whatever your whatever your line length limit is. Uh, you would kind of have to do something like this to make it, you know, somewhat readable, and you'd have to use these ugly backslashes. And you couldn't uh, you couldn't have a trailing comma here if this was your last one. So you had to you had to leave the trailing comma out there. And if you guys if you guys know me, you know how I feel about trailing commas. Um, but you'd kind of have this, you know sort of ugly syntax. And this, again, still works in Python 3.9. This works in previous versions. Uh, but in Python 3.9, if you're using the new parser, which is optionally enabled, you can now have parenthesized with statements, which allow you to have implicit continuation, and you can have trailing commas. So you can write something like this. As v1, and ctx as v2. Notice I have a trailing comma there. And, you know, print v1, v2. I think this is really cool. I'm I'm super excited about this to become, you know, a finalized syntax. I guess technically now it's just experimental, but yeah, this this is this has been needed for a very very long time, and I'm I'm very excited about this. Um, but it was basically impossible to implement this with the previous parser uh, due to the way that it was implemented. But anyway, that's that's the peg parser. So there should be no changes. You should notice no changes, um, but. There will be new syntax in the future that will be able to take advantage of, you know, a smarter parser here. Okay, the next thing that we want to talk about, this is a very, very subtle change, but I think it's going to be uh, pretty important. I've made a little script that demos this. Uh, the double under file magical global of uh, interactive scripts is now changed to be an absolute path. This makes it a lot easier to, you know, locate files relative to a script. Uh, so this is, you know, just a simple file that prints file. If we were to run this in Python 3.8, you'll see that it doesn't uh, print out the absolute path here. It's just the, the relative path to that script. But in Python 3.9, it will print out, or you'll get the full absolute path. Now, this is mostly useful if you were doing something like, you know, import os.path. You know, my parent dir equals os.path.join uh, a file dot dot or something like that. And like, you know, now, now you can, um, I guess you'd have to norm path it. My parent dir. So in, in Python 3.9, this can spell properly, norm path. In Python 3.9, you can see that we get temp slash explains, but in Python 3.8, you get this dot directory, which is maybe less useful than you would want it to be. Uh, but anyway, I think this is, this is a pretty nice change. Uh, <laughs> the, the next, the next change is, uh, I don't think anyone's going to really care about this, but this is one of the things that I contributed to in Python 3.9 is I added some new APIs to the curses module. Um, one of them is the set tab size. I also added get tab size and set escape delay and get escape delay. The, 
they're, they're not super important, but um, here's just a small demo of a small curses app where we're going to take tab size as a uh, command line argument and we're going to print out a tab in curses. And if we Python 3.9 tab size.py, you'll see that this is an eight space tab, which is the default tab behavior. Uh, but you can also configure that. So you can say tab size, you know, what, 20, 20 tabs. And so you can see that this is a 20 space tab. Or if you want to do, you know, JavaScript and have two space tabs, that's that's now an API that you can use. And there is, there is basically no way to do this before uh, without manually converting tabs into spaces and then printing the spaces however you want them to be. Um, the, the next change that we're going to talk about is actually one that I think it's a little bit weird, um, and <laughs> my syntax highlighter actually hasn't caught up to this change yet. Um, and that's that decorators in Python 3.9, if it's a valid expression, it can now be a valid decorator. And I'll link a video about decorators in the description below. Um, but I've set up a small decorator here. Uh, now this is a very contrived example, like normally you would just call, you know, at dec here, and that would reference your decorator, but maybe you have, I don't know, a mapping of decorators or something like that. I didn't say it's a good example, it's just just an example. Um, but before, you couldn't have a special expression here, and that's actually why my text editor is highlighting this as red, because this used to be not legal. It used to only be a name or a call, and those were the only things allowed here. But now you can have arbitrary expressions here, and so you can see, like, you could access a dictionary, and that's now a decorator. Um, you know, if we were to run this in 3.8, you'll see that we get a syntax error, but if we run this in 3.9, it's going to run this decorator and then run this function when we call down here. So we should see inside decorator and then hello, hello one. Um, but yeah, that's that's a new change in Python 3.9. I guess this is technically a syntax change in Python 3.9, but this happened before the peg parser was written. Um, and the last thing we're going to talk about is new modules that are in Python 3.9. Uh, there are two new modules. If, if I read the docs correctly, I'll also link the doc the documentation in the description that goes over, goes over all the change because there's there's a bunch of other changes that are not covered in this video. Uh, but one of the new modules is the zone info module. Uh, if you've ever worked with time zones in Python, you'll know that they're kind of a pain in the butt and the standard library doesn't provide functionality for them. But now it does. <laughs> so the zone info now provides time zone information that you can use with date time. Um, so I will not be installing PyTZ anymore, basically. Um, but yeah, the, the zone info module is there. It provides time zones for daytime. And the other, I mean, you can look at zone info. You know, these are, these are the APIs that are provided there. Uh, the other module that was introduced is Graphlib, and there's actually not that much in Graphlib yet. Uh, but there's an important, um... An important type that's been added, the topological sorter. Uh, this allows you to do topological sorts in Python. I believe this was originally in a different model. It was just not exposed as an API, but now it has a first class API. So if you're working with graphs, you can now do a topological sort using just the standard library. Anyway, those are the those are the tenish things that I think are interesting in Python 3.9 and that I'm excited for using in the future. Um, if you guys have other stuff you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!